You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. A show I'm happy is coming back. The cast of <laughs> Dear White People. Hey. Hi. Hey, guys. Hi. Say their names. We'll let them Logan introduce Brown. themselves. Let's say their own yes. names. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm Logan Browning. I'm, Samantha White. Yes. <laughs> yes. A.K.A. Sam White. I'm Ashley Blaine Featherson, Joelle Brooks. <laughs> I'm Antoinette Robertson, Coco Connors. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Calandra. Oh, Calandria. Now, for Calandria. people that don't know about Dear White People, explain to them what it is. Dear White People is a series that follows several students of color on the landscape of an Ivy League, predominantly white university. And racial tensions get to like an all-time high when a blackface party is thrown. So mm. we follow each student individually and kind of see their lives and how they, they deal with racism and social injustice. Being a black what, face okay. in a white place. Yes. A black face in a white place. <laughs> what letter is this show writing to write pe white people? Um, I think it's saying, see us, acknowledge us, hear us. Um, you know, what we're saying about how we're, we feel that we're treated at times is valid. Mm -hmm. um, and we're being unapologetic about it. One of the best examples of that is when uh, Sam White's boyfriend actually, Gabe, calls the cops, right, at the mm. party. White boy! <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So that's what they're going to just call the cops. At Gabe the was scared. Party. He was scared, y'all. Oh, the scared. last thing we do when we're scared is call the cops. Because right. Yeah. That's yeah, even that's scarier. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there was a whole debate, and we've been having this debate about white people using the N word in songs. When they're yeah. singing along to future. Not okay. Trap. Not okay. Words and he's saying the word like it's mm -hmm. okay. Not Gabe for clarification. Not Another Gabe, no, okay. <laughs> Another white guy. Sure. Although Gabe can't do that either. No, mm -hmm. and no. Sam makes no. sure he knows that. <laughs> yeah. Right, and it turns into a whole debate, and they get into an argument about that, and then Gabe is the person that actually calls the cops, and he's white, and he's your boyfriend, Sam, on mm -hmm. the show, which is very ironic. You know, to be yeah, so... a swirl. Mm -hmm. Well, she's already a swirl, so yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Have you guys ever been around somebody white using the N-word that singing ooh, along to a song? Not I, said the fly, not me. <laughs> Nobody's doing it with me. <laughs> and if they were, they wouldn't still be, right? <laughs> nope. I don't play that. You're nah. about to come out with your own Dr. Seuss Dear White People book or something? I'll <laughs> even, like, if I'm in the car and, like, I hear people, like, blasting rap music and they're white, I'm always, like, looking to be like, w are you about to say it? What I you about see, to do? It makes I see my it all eye the twitch. time, though. You don't see it at a club or party. I, you never all see the all, time. Yes. I, I was at a Kanye concert and I seen him. I think it, God's protecting I just, me. At J. Cole's concert, I did see it, though. <laughs> they were far, so I couldn't get to him, really. But can't you, yeah, yeah, you just, just, snatch him up. just to play white devil's advocate, can't you see where it's a little confusing for them? I do. I understand. But that's what I don't understand. I understand why it might be confusing Confusing, but I I still don't get why people use the word. Like you're thinking, oh, I like the song, I can sing it. I'm like, yeah, but that's still a line you can't cross. So I feel like some people like debating that. Mm -hmm. It's not a debate. Like you can't use this word. Can that's they, it. Period. Can they I mean, hum it? No, no. But by the same token, I, <laughs> by the same token, I just kind of feel like that's like if a black person said, you know, well, we endured slavery for so long, we should be able to call white people like. I don't know, crackers, crackers or something. But they so do we can! Like but no, but I don't know. <laughs> crackers, no, crackers, crackers, colonizer, no. mayonnaise. Oh my I'm so <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> no, but, but my point is that I, I don't think that you're not walking around being like, well, just because of slavery I'm able to say it. Like, I guess... I don't know. I just don't think I that say it out of a reaction yeah. for the way that my people have been oppressed. But it's not to yeah. every white Not to every white person. everyone. Just the racist big. What if they one. change the word go. to ninja? Ninja. Okay, but y'all, I really do have a question. How do you guys feel about like <laughs> artists using the word? Like, how do you feel about like should, black should artists? Art, yeah, should should artists have every license to say whatever they want, regardless? Yeah. Knowing, I mean, think about an artist like a Kanye, like knowing that the majority of his audience audience can be predominantly white. Sometimes, Logan, I agree with you. I think that we need to stop using the word. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> really? I'm serious. I don't think that the word. I don't yeah. think that you can ever empower the word because we always say that we've taken the power out of it. That's yeah. not true because if we did, we wouldn't even care if somebody else used it. Hmm. I think artists should be able to say what they want to say in the song. I mean, should they use it? I don't think so. You mean you black just artists? Yeah. Two years ago, a year ago. <laughs> it's hard, man. It. Because sometimes there's ago. no other way to describe somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know what I mean? Sometimes. Maybe we make something else up. I don't know what yeah. it is yet, but we call each other gods and They'll goddesses too, and kings yeah. and queens yeah, yeah, and brother yeah. and sister. It's a lot. It's a lot more high energy words we could be using. That's yeah, true. yeah, that's, that's true. true. But I don't know if that's. We should be change. elevating each other. 
Well, this debate happens on the show, and it turns a little bit into a scuffle. Mm -hmm. And then Gabe calls the cops, and the cops show up, and you see exactly what the problem is. And it was a great example of we're still not alike. Like, we still have a lot of different Mm -hmm. things that we go through as black people. We come, you know, the cops come to a party, and the first thing they do is ask Reggie, who's black, Mm -hmm. for his ID. And they don't Mm -hmm. ask anybody else for their ID. And we just saw um, Mm -hmm. a story that happened in Toronto where there were four black patrons in a restaurant, and they were asked to prepay for their food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Uh, Yeah. Mm What? The only four black people in the restaurant, and they were asked to prepay for their meal. Mm. And so things like this are still happening. Now, have you all ever called the cops for any reason? I did. (laughs) And I hesitated before I Mm -hmm. did it because it sounded like a man was beating a woman right Mm -hmm. above me. Mm -hmm. And I was terrified for her. It could have been rough sex. It could have been rough. It could have been. That's what they said. And I said that. That's what they said was happening. What were they saying? Okay, so, no, like, I heard a slam. And I heard, bitch, whatever. And I and it felt like Roll I felt playing. the wall. Yeah. And it, it scared the crap out of me. So then I was like, no, it's fine. I'm not going to do anything. Because then the cops are like two minutes from my house. And I was like, but if I don't call the cops and somebody's really getting... Because I have family members. Well, I have... I know people who have died from domestic violence. Mm-hmm. So I'm very sensitive to that topic. Mm-hmm. So I was like, but if I don't call and somebody's bleeding on the floor, then how am I going to feel like... My fear of the police needs to be like my me wanting to champion that girl needs to be more important than my fear in that moment. So I called and then they went upstairs and uh, apparently they said they nothing happened. Well, oh, it's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. I'm not mad at you for going with yeah. your gun yeah. But it is something we hesitate to do. Yeah. What about yeah. you guys? I have it. I've I've in that I'll be honest in that I've been in a similar situation and I hesitated. Yeah. I didn't call and was she, I was I she getting beat up sometimes. Yeah. I think so. And I didn't hey. call. Mm. And I hey. felt really... And it. I don't think it was because... Uh, I don't know. It was a weird... Like, I had this, like, feeling. And so I was like, do I call? Or do I... What if it isn't something? Like, what yeah. if this is just... It, it's like... It's almost like I felt like I was intruding. But then it's also... A, I'm a human being. And that's what you're supposed to stick up for other people. And then what if the cops made... I just didn't know what to do. Yeah. I kind of froze, uh, to, to be completely honest. Logan definitely called yeah. the police. So, so, <laughs> let me tell you this. So, two things. Okay. Because... All right. Yes, I've called the cops and I hesitated when I did because it was for a situation that I was in. And the person I was calling it against was a black man Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do it. And I gave him about I gave him time and I said, I'm about to do this. Mm -hmm. I need you to know this. Like, I I need you to leave because and I didn't feel safe. And at that point, I had to make a decision. Do I want there to be a record of this so that if this keeps happening, at least I'm protected? You know, ended up getting a restraining order and everything. But like. It, it, I, I didn't want to do that. I didn't know how it was going to turn out for him. For uh, mm-hmm. like, I yeah. how to turn. Was he hitting on you or something? No, he showed up at he showed up and and wouldn't leave mm-hmm. and um had a history and he felt unsafe. Yeah, and I need I just needed there to be a record that I felt unsafe so that mm-hmm. it, it at some point you know he if it had sure. gotten. So when yeah. the police yeah. came, what happened? They arrested him, or they just told him to leave? He charmed the pants off of them, and they called me down and said, hey, um, yeah, he said, you've been the one doing X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, yeah, that's why he's at my place at one in the morning and won't leave and I called you. But he, but I'm the one right. that's wow. making... He could that's a lot another issue. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. I called the cops on this white kid about two months ago. He was ringing my doorbell. I love calling cops on white kids. <laughs> 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 he was ringing your doorbell. Why? Yeah, exactly. It was three in the morning. <laughs> wow. Was he selling something? Emergency. There's a guy outside. I what love it. Like? He's white. Suspicious <laughs> looking white <laughs> dog. Couldn't wait. A member of Vanilla Isis. Yeah. Now, Logan, your character really <laughs> intrigues me because she's so militant on the show, but she does date a, a, a white white guy. Mm-hmm. You know, you think that people lose a, a level of blackness when they date outside of their race? I don't want to think that. I think that there is a part of your blackness that you get to explore deeper when you are in a relationship with another person mm-hmm. of your same ethnicity. Um but I, I, I think that Gabe is, a, in quote, like a woke white person. And so she gets to experience, you know, having conversations that, that she may not have with a black guy that, mm-hmm. that stimulate her in a different way. Yeah. Um, it's a choice. It's a choice that everybody gets, has to make. Um, that's her. Mm-hmm. That's People it. do look, they, they look at, they, look, they do like, they turn the volume down a little when they like, when you like real like woke and then they see you with a white guy he's like, like oh, you're not that woke at all mm-hmm. that's yeah. what people really yeah. think have you guys ever dated a white boy a white I guy I I've only dated I did. black men 
I did. <laughs> and it was an interesting uh, bring you home to family kind How of was situation. That home to mom and daddy? I have a Jamaican mother. Hey, uh, yeah, oh, he's coming to dinner. Yes. What so, one, white boy? Yeah. White bread. <laughs> 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 so like, like little conversations were like that went over his head, like. He was like, wait, so what are they talking about right now? And I was See, like, I oh, can't yeah. do it. I'm not cut out for it. it. Was, it was, yeah. I, I there were definitely oh, no differences. But no, bring him bring him home would be fine. It's just I yeah. that would irritate. I want I need you to understand what I'm talking about. I need you yeah. to I don't want like, to have to explain. Be saying that he's not gonna understand. I don't know. Even if it's just like I wouldn't even want to be in a situation where he's like Oh, like you guys are eating like uh, yams and collard greens and shit. I'm like, what's that? How do you? Where does that come from? You know, and I'd have to be like, well, uh, when we were slaves, oh, we had to. You know, I just don't. I See, just you don't, better than me. I'd say KFC, motherfucker. That's where it comes I just from. don't want to be. I just. I need you to just get it. Yeah. You know, what no about all of us dating Asian men. I'm sorry, what? You I'm said, have we, so dated, so you said, have we, we dated so Asian quiet. men? You said, have we dated Asian men? <laughs> yes, that was based off of what Issa Rae put in her book that all of a sudden everybody got mad at, that educated black women should just get with Asian men. Because, <laughs> because <laughs> with Asian men. Because Nothing. they have a surplus of men in China. They do. Like, they outnumber <laughs> women, like, 27 or, or something crazy. Mm-hmm, because they used to get rid of yeah, the women because they, they could only the, have one the kid. Yeah, they used to get rid of the baby girls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that educated black women should date whoever, whoever the, whoever hell, they the, the hell they want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but I also, I think that sometimes um, on an opposite spectrum, black women or men, that it's important to them to be with someone else that's black. I feel like sometimes we're shamed for that, too. Or, mm-hmm. Like, when I say that, mm-hmm. like, it is important to me that I marry a black man, mm-hmm. people are like, why? You think yeah. it's why you can't to black men that, to marry a black woman? To some, yeah. to some, I think, I think that the, 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 it, I think it's more important to the a higher percentage of black women mm-hmm. than yeah. black men. But yeah. I've I've experienced that before because I I've said that many a time. I'll continue to say it. Yeah. Um, that's important to me, particularly from where we come from and how that was prohibited. We were pulled Word. apart. I want to yeah. pull us back together. You no, know, that's less yeah. likely when, especially when you go to school that's so mixed. Yeah. You know, because I like yeah. I look at my daughter now. She goes to a mixed school where. I don't really see her dating a black person right now. That's why I want mm-hmm. her to go to HBCU so bad because mm. she doesn't see it. So I went to Howard. That was it. so Howard. Cha- being yeah. at Howard just changed my life. Yeah. Like it just was so. You know, every day you're walking around saying kings it was and queens. Crappy. I heard. I heard. No, no, no. no. I never heard <laughs> that. That's kind of weird. Yeah, I, I actually <laughs> don't see anything. What are you talking about? That's the real HBCU. Why can't y'all come together and be on the walls? Where's the unity? Do you see something? Can we get some unity? <laughs> you could all be going to Winchester. Right, yeah. right. It's interesting you went to Howard because, yeah. uh, you know, so is it a stretch to play uh, black women going to an Ivy League school? No, it's not a stretch because I, so I grew up um, like in the D.C. area, but I went to predominantly white schools growing up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was a huge reason why I went to Howard because I wanted that experience. Cause I mm-hmm. My experience prior to that was more like Winchester. Um, but as far as like my college experience, it's completely different than Joelle's. Like mm-hmm. I never felt like a black place or a black face at a white place. I was mm-hmm. a black face amongst all sorts of amazing other black mm-hmm. people. And you didn't have no white women walking up to you asking about your hair? I did not. I did not. I did not. That, that happens on dear white people. Yeah. It, it does. I mean, that was my it experience. Does. I didn't realize, like, I, but you almost don't even realize it until you do. Like, I was the only black girl on my entire hall in mm-hmm. my building, and I really didn't realize it until one thing would happen. You know, one little thing, somebody mm-hmm. say something to you, and you go, oh, damn, like, or you realize by myself, but you realize too who party. can you talk to about? You can't be like, yeah, girl, you, yeah. you ain't got nobody to, to talk to about. Yeah, it. but yeah. there is, but still, on a on a, a predominantly white campus, just like Winchester, mm-hmm. there are pockets of black people, and they stick together. Mm-hmm. You yeah. that you hang out at your own little mini. Black That's how my college yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. As yes, a matter of fact, the black guys on my school, they would have like a black girlfriend, but then they would go to the sorority and the fraternity parties mm-hmm. and the white the white ones. And it'd be like a whole different world. So they'll yeah. cheat on their girlfriend oh, no. with these white girls, but the, it was so they segregated. Never made, what? They never wow. even wow. They wow. Do that. Paths would never even cross. Wow. So nobody would know because it was like having a whole different world. Well, just, I just want to raise my hand and say this. It's a lot of guys mm. who, black, <laughs> if you're a black man and you date a black woman, if you cheat with a white girl, they don't consider it cheating. <gasps> but don't worry about that. Is that I, a real thing? That's what I've heard. I've heard that, 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 I've heard that before. That. That's I've heard, what are you saying? I've heard that before. Give me Cite names. Your sources. I've just heard that before. So what do they consider it? Just like exploring a fetish or if something? If it's white, it's out of sight. So what? it's just like, that's uh, what I've heard. Okay, Goodbye. No. Lies. No. Lies. 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 Lies.
That's just that's we just wrong. Why be a sellout? <laughs> why you want to be a sellout? Why you want to just sell out to people? Why you, you want to? Why you just want to sell out? Why you just want to? Why you just want to sell out to people like that? Why? Now, why would you do that? Now people still angry at the title, dare white people. Yes, they are they? Everybody do we care care on her. The but it's a love letter, dear white people. <laughs> I will say, in our season two, our scripts have the white crossed out. Yeah. So this season is actually why? even more. Because this season is really, it's still, the show is still a show. Not yeah. like you can't see it. Not like cross, like it's just like it's a like line. Out. Yeah. Because it's like a Because it's really emphasizing like, dear Coco people, dear Joelle people, dear Sam people, like really emphasizing who these people are as characters yeah. and don't just see them for their race. Yeah. Like they are who they are in spite of and because of their race. You know what I mean? Like see, see these young students. And it's more important that people understand that being black is not like a singular experience. Mm -hmm. We're We're not not monolithic. Yeah, we're not monolithic. And the thought process is when people expect you to be a representative of your entire race, because we all think the same, that makes absolutely no sense. We're all multidimensional people and we have completely different opinions and thoughts. So when you follow all of these characters, you realize, wait, Coco might think, okay, wait, I want to be in the White House. I think infiltrating the system is the way to go. Sam might want to rage against the machine and like do protests and stuff. We're, we're all talking about millennial activism in different ways. So like when we see like the March for Our Lives, we see like millennial activists are needed now more than ever because I feel like everybody else is voting it up, mm-hmm. um, to be perfectly honest. So it's important that people start using their voices to speak out against racial injustice and, and social injustice of every kind. So um, that's why I think. Have, you, have your views of activism changed as a result of dead white people? I, you know what? I used to underestimate the, like, how much of a platform we have in terms of like, a digital space. I didn't realize, like, wait, I could tweet and I could reach this many people mm-hmm. and Instagram posts reach people. And it's not just um, going to the protests. There's so many different ways that you can be active and speak out in your community. And given that all of all of the actors, I mean, all of the characters are, are doing different things in their own ways, like Gabe is doing his own kind of like a, she's doing a podcast, Gabe is doing his own kind of documentary or series, Coco wants a more leadership role in, in, in the university. Everybody's finding a different space mm-hmm. to have their voice being heard. So it, it really opened my eyes to that. Now, in the first episode of the new season, not to give anything away, but there is this obsession with Twitter that mm-hmm. Sam has and responding to someone saying really an alt-right person saying really nasty things to her, really negative things. Has that happened to you guys as a result of the show and have you responded and gotten into a Twitter war? It's happened to Justin. Yeah. That's where all of that stuff mm-hmm. came from. Our, yeah. yeah, it happened to him and a lot of the writers. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff is is verbatim. A lot of the stuff that, mm-hmm. that happened, which is, like, is disgusting wow. to have to perform, yeah. to have to read. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I... I ha- I'm sure people have said stuff like that. I that shit just like yeah. flies by me. Like it, I don't I don't get into it with people. So the white I, people mad at the title? Uh, yes. Yeah. Sure, yes. So yes. mad. So mad. Think that we're racist. Um, I'm gonna send Justin this cup then. Yes, he would love that. He would love that. Yeah. He would love that. But like <laughs> people trying to find us individually, like having to like look us up individually and like write hateful things in our DMs. And, I'll be and honest, I haven't had that experience. Like, I, oh, wow. knock on wood. Oh, I, it's coming after this interview. Don't, don't come for me. <laughs> for me <laughs> unless I send for you. <laughs> no, but like, for me, I... I have like I have my opinions about clapping back, right? Because we're in like the time of clapping back. And mm-hmm. I just feel like... Whenever in the history of clapping back, did who you did the troll that you clap back at be like, oh, thanks, thanks for clapping back. I'm not right. going to say anything now. Yeah, like, you're right. It's a waste of time. Like it's a waste of time. I'm not going to give these people my energy but because you just if I have time, 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 but it's never one time. time. That's my point. It's never. It never just ends there. That's why so. you clap back and then mute them. <laughs> and then, and yeah, and then you wait for Ball Alert to post it, and you be like, "Oh, I said some fire." <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm gonna read you on an intellectual just, level. These and trolls then I'm don't deserve it. my energy. No. I ain't got time. Now, one of the tips from dear white people is uh, when you ask someone who looks ethnically different, uh, you know, uh, what are you? What are you? People ask me that all the time. You know, so. why? Why, does, why is that? What do you say? Um, I say I'm a Capricorn. Sometimes, <laughs> yes. I mean, I you know, then <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? And then they ask, oh, well, what ethnicity? Because my last name is Yee, mm-hmm. you know, and then people will be like, oh, are you Dominican? Are you this? Are you that? What are you? Well, yeah. no, dear white people, they said a person that's about to slap the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. You have a problem with that? Somebody asking you your nationality? I don't. Well, it's it's I'm how you say myself. it. If you say, what are you? Mm-hmm. Like, I, that's like, that's asking, like, I'm a human. What do you yeah. mean? Yeah. What, what you am I? People, what I don't like is when people say, well, you have to be mixed with something because you're this. Yeah. Do you know you're what pretty. I mean? What? Making yeah. the yeah. What you that a with? woman who is, I mean, of what? course, we're all mixed in some capacity, but like, assuming that you have to be mixed to be beautiful or you have to be mixed to have certain feet. I don't know. Yeah. I had an agent once or a manager at a, at a time uh, wanted me to go out for a biracial role, like a black, like a girl that was black and white. And I was like, I don't, I don't think that like the mother was white. I was like, I just don't think that that would be like believable for me. And she was like, no, she's like, you have white features. Huh? And I was like, mean? yeah, this is the white is woman mean? manager that I had. And I said, what does that mean? She was like, you know, you just don't have traditional African American <laughs> features like you don't like literally she's like going into this and i'm just like and at that time obviously i knew i had to leave her but that was a real thing like, that's when you got to check people, up and say the black man and black women are the original uh beings of this planet okay so technically y'all yeah. got our features mm, okay mm. so did yeah. you go no oh, what? <laughs> to, waste <laughs> my time that, to waste my time with that audition <laughs> hell no <laughs> no now, I was very confused about the character of Coco at first, whether or not I, how I felt about her. Mm-hmm. You know, because she's very sweet, but then there's certain things that she does that would irritate me sometimes. Mean yeah, girl. For sure. Mm-hmm. You know, just really like the whole, <laughs> I guess, really trying to fit in yeah. in certain spaces when I was like, well, why is she doing that? And um, so how did you feel about that character and how can you explain her? The way that I, I mean, I feel like when you read it on the page, if 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 you don't add depth to it, people are going to just see her as, as just vapid, or she's she's just very superficial. But from my understanding, this my thought process about it was: if I grew up in a world that veered towards a Eurocentric ideal of beauty, mm. and I saw other girls with weaves and stuff while my hair was natural, and they were getting all the attention from the men, what would I do to be mm. noticed from men? Mm. And and if you think about it, there are moments where we we. We do different things because we're trying to, we want to be loved. And ultimately, everybody wants to be loved and have some kind of validation. So for Coco, the the Sam and Coco feud happened if, I don't know if you you watched all of her season, mm-hmm. but like Coco was doing everything to be with Troy. Mm-hmm. And then her best friend dated Troy. That happened. It essentially it was like your best friend going behind your back and mm-hmm. messing with the dude that she knew you were trying to pine over and be with. So that's when you start to see the mean girl coming out of Coco. It's coming from a place of pain and not just I'm just being a mean girl. It's like this is somebody who had my heart as a friend who started dating the guy that she knew I wanted to be with, which ultimately she ended up getting to be with. But still, it became like, well, I'm going to one up her. And then dealing with the whole colorism issue in right. terms Especially of like, light skin privilege. Issue, like, oh, your okay, hair looks well, so nice. Where, what exactly. Kind of hair? What kind of hair is that? And then when she looks at me, I'm like, mine's too. And, you know, and she's, she's like, like eh. I got a question for all three of y'all then based off what you just said. Have you ever felt the need to conform to white standards of beauty as a black, as black woman? When I was modeling and I didn't know any better, yes. Because I was told uh, very, very blunt, like specifically, you're way prettier with straight hair. That's it. Like, that's what we want from you. Uh, we don't want you to wear your hair natural. And I left that agency and ended up going to Ford. Um, and when I wore my hair curly, I started working so much more. Wow. And I didn't understand that I was empowering people by choosing to just be comfortable and accept myself the way that I was. I was just kind of like, well, no, I want to do something different. And now that I can, now that I understand it, like having that black girl magic moment for Coco, walking down those stairs with natural hair, unsure of the man that whose attention I was vying for, who I got a weave for, um, and all of these things for would accept me how I looked naturally. And then having him say, I don't care about your hair was such a beautiful moment. Right. Saying that we don't we don't mm-hmm. need all of this. We're more than enough. Mm-hmm. And I love the I, fact I wanna, that you I know you want to be that, president though. of yeah. the United States. She's like, I'm going to be the second black the second woman black. president of the yeah. United States. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know that I... Well, I'm re- remembering now. I remember in high school... Um, one in colored contacts. No, Ashley. Yeah, I was wearing like, <laughs> yeah. All my high school friends are like, probably like, oh my God, I remember. Don't pull out any pictures, y'all. Um, so you got them. So you much. Oh, I had them. Yeah, I was out here with the hazel eyes. Yeah, different um, colors? Green. Did people oh, used to ask you, are those your real eyes? And you say yes? For sure. Ashley, <laughs> what are you talking but, about? So I, I'm saying all this to say, though, so I'm like, what, 15 maybe? I don't, in retrospect, that probably is what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. I oh, thought wow. that that would make me 
more attractive. Be, because mm. people more are like, appealing, oh, your eyes are so pretty. More exotic, more look different right. than mm-hmm. just the dark skinned black girl I am with dark brown eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, I think. Um, so yeah, I, w- I definitely went through that phase. Was it not you weren't trying to be like other black women that you saw wearing contacts? I don't, or did you get that? Like, I want c- colored eyes like a white woman. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that was like, I want to look like a white woman. But I think I think it's all, I think it's it, it was how the imagery around me was affecting me subconsciously. Mm. It was like, that looks more interesting, maybe. Right. Mm-hmm. That, I'm, I'm the it's opposite of that. Let me see if I, I think it was just, remember there was black women, white women, Latina, it doesn't really matter. It was a thing for a yeah. while, people wearing it, color But it was also yeah. a thing, yeah, that was, was like fad. the phase. This is in yeah. like the 2000s, like early 2000s, so probably it might have been a phase, but I got to be honest about it. I was, Rocking, that was you, Logan. <laughs> what about you, Logan? That is some news. I, She's like, I got my fake contacts in right now. <laughs> right now. Damn. Um, <laughs> I I've never felt like I've had to conform to um, European standards, but I do feel like I've had to constantly try to find: Do I lean more? Do mm. I, am I more white? Am I more black? Do I wear? Um, Fila, do I wear Fubu? Do I wear Aeropasta? <laughs> like, what do I? What do I wear? No, seriously, like, I, like where I grew up, I grew up in a very nice neighborhood in the worst county in Georgia. Um, I went to public school growing up, so I, I, my mom traveled for a living. I wore things from London and Paris to this public school where we like we don't wear things from London and Paris, mm-hmm. and so I got made fun of a lot, a lot. And so then I thought, okay, mom, you gotta, I can't, like, I gotta survive and you, I need to, we need to change this up. Like, I need to fit in. And so, and then after that, I went to, came to LA, I ended up going to private school. Oh, crap. Mm-hmm. I gotta fit in. Mom, we gotta change this up. Right. I gotta start gotta cutting go back my to hair. London, Paris. I, yeah, I gotta, yeah, I gotta cut my hair like the white girls. They have layers. I need to straighten my hair, cut it like the white. So, yeah, I guess I was, but it was depending on the environment I was, and it went both ways for me. Yeah. So you adapted. Oh, man. Call me stupid. Pardon my ignorance. You're biracial in real life. Uh, both of my parents are black. Oh, okay. So you're not biracial. Actually, in real life. okay. You know what? I am going to go ahead and say this right here. I've never said this in public. Mm. I'm adopted. Wow. And really? I was raised by black parents. Um, I've never met my parents. My birth mom was white, and my dad was black, but I've never met them. Oh, the wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got you. I've literally Word. waited my whole life to say that out wow. loud. Well, thank Word. you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Samantha. I mean, Logan. I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. But, but honestly, it makes it, it's made it very, honestly, this is the most freeing moment of my, probably my entire life and career because it has made it very difficult for me to explain how mm. I relate to Sam and how I don't because I mm. was raised with black parents. Mm. I was raised black. Like, black, I'm right. black, but I don't look black to people, and so I don't understand. Yeah, you do. But, but, but do you know what I mean? They see the light eyes. They see my. They go. They're like, what do you mix? They're like, confused. And, and they say, what do you yeah. mix with? And I go, they say, what are you? Exactly. Yeah. But I yeah. go, but my. But I was raised with black. Mm. But then I go, oh, but I am. It's very. Mm. Confu- it's a confusing identity for me. Right. When did and you find out when you were adopted? When did you? My find parents out? told me very young. I think I was like five, five really? in the bathtub, and I, my mom was like, Logan, I have to tell you something. You are my daughter, but somebody else gave birth to you. And I was like, but you're my mommy. She's like, I'm your mommy. I was like, cool. Did you even know what that was? I don't, I I think I did. The rest Mm -hmm. of my life, I think I did. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I, and that's just kind of what it was. How did you eventually come to grips with your identity? Well, it, it, I'm coming to grips with it. And all of all, actually, I have a file that tells me what happened. Mm. And it tells me that my mom was 18. She was young. She was her, she was, got pregnant by a white guy in the army. And, um, I came out. They had a big Catholic wedding. I came out and I was not white. She had an affair with a 34-year-old black man who was married with who just had a kid. So that that I think fed into like like am I re- do, do, am I being rejected by a white man like like I was as a child? Like mm-hmm. all those things play into my head and mm-hmm. I think literally this is the most freeing experience because I've always been like nope, 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 doesn't exist for me because I've never said it out loud, doesn't exist, doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so must oh, let's crazy. get this Logan yeah, Browning uh, scripted right. series yes. going. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> got, got Jesus go, Christ. So okay. Got... Oh, man. Oh, now, I I more, now I got more I questions. One, I have one more question I wanted to ask you about um, your relationship with Reggie on the show as opposed to Gabe. You think you felt um, you had to be with some a black man when, in the light of everything that had happened with um, Reggie, with the cops and him being traumatized and you, I guess, at times feeling guilty for having a white boyfriend do you think that you getting with Reggie was you just trying to 
have that experience? Or what do you mm. think was the mind uh, in the mind of Sam in that moment? I think unfortunately for Sam, she can be really selfish. And I think she she thinks she's helping. I think she thought she was helping Reggie by being there for him. And, and maybe she was in some capacity. Um, but I, I think she was I think she missed the bigger picture with Reggie and really what happened to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I think that that she does she does feel a little bit guilty for her her true love for Gabe. Like she she loves him right. and her the fact that she doesn't love Reggie in that way. I think she's attracted to both Reggie and Gabe for their their brilliance and their intelligence. And the reason that she goes for Gabe is because he challenges her a little bit more, like her dad did, actually. Mm -hmm. um, not that he looks like her dad, but that he actually stimulates her in that way. And Reggie just, like, is always like, I love you, Sam. Like, I'm here for you. And she wants... But, yeah, I, she, she, she did him kind of wrong. Like, yeah. that's not what he needed in that moment. All right. Well, thank you so much. You yeah, thank y'all. Yeah, man. Y'all cool as hell, man. Thank you. It's dope when you watch a show and you like it, but then you meet the cast and they actually like cool as hell. Proud of you guys too. Yeah, this is dope. Well, May Hold on, is Lena Wave joining this season? I read yeah, that. Yeah, she is. I saw her in the first episode. As a regular? Yeah. yeah. No, no. She's, 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 she's popping crying. in, but she's in that thing. She's in. Hilarious. You'll have to see. You'll have to see. Where's Lena get all this time from? <laughs> Lena, killing it. Lena will make time. Hours She'll in a make day. time. Are there other yeah, guest man. appearances we should know about in the new season? Um, Rachel Dozal, I heard, is going to be playing a professor. It's <laughs> <laughs> not true. That's Kid a rumor. Fury. Uh, Kid, yeah, Fury? Kid, Kid Fury. Kid Fury. Wow. Todger, 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 Todger. Some other people. Some other people. Yeah. We can't say. Mm -hmm. But when you see, you're going to be like, why yeah. didn't they tell us? Is Kid Fury yeah. playing himself or are you playing a student? Who? Kid, Kid Fury. Fury. He's, um, he's playing a student. Yeah. He's, he's a regular. No. No, no, no. What's the name? I love you, Fury, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> so Thank you guys for joining us. The cast of Dear White People. Thank you. Thank you guys. This is a blast. You guys are. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.